This program is going to take a look at Lewis assets and bases, but to begin with, I want to take a look at the historical definitions of assets and bases. The first to attribute to Cervantes Arrhenius, who says that assets produce H pluses in water and bases produce OHs or hydroxides in water. So his view is simply the following. If we put HCl into water, it would break apart and form protons, our H plus ion, and our Cl minus ion. So here we would see the production of protons. Um, for bases, let's take a look at ammonia in water. What he visioned happened in this case was the two actually reacted, and the reaction would then produce ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. So there we have the production of hydroxide in water. But Arrhenius's concepts were driven by the presence of water. Bronsted and Lowry seek to expand that to the definition of acids and bases beyond the scope of just being in water. So they defined an acid as a substance that donates a proton and a base is one that accepts it. Let's take a look at an example that doesn't involve water. So let's take ammonia as a gas and HCl as a gas. What they viewed happened was the H, leaving its electrons behind, would be donated over here. So we would have H with its lost electrons remaining behind with the chlorine so we would have chlorine with a negative charge, and the ammonia would gain a proton and form the ammonium ion. Those two would then combine to form solid ammonium chloride. So here we see an example that does not involve water and the movement of protons. This substance that donates the protons Bronsted and Lowry called an acid, and the substance that accepted the, pro the proton was termed a base. So Bronsted and Lowry involved the movements of protons. Lewis's concept went beyond that. It does not involve necessarily the movement of a proton. So there's involved an understanding of electron pairs. I want to go back to the example up here and take a look at how Lewis viewed it. So he would have thought ammonia, I'll provide a structure here, and an unbonded pair of electrons. The HCl would involve a bonded pair of electrons here with the chlorine, something like this. And what he viewed happened was there was a fissioning happening here. So the electron that at one time belonged to the hydrogen now belongs to the chlorine. So this would now generate a chloride ion. H would now become positively charged and it would be short electrons. It would be needing electrons and it would then go seek out this pair of electrons that were present in the ammonia. So we can see here that the ammonia donates a pair of electrons to the proton. The substance that donates the pair is identified as a Lewis base, and the H plus that accepts it is viewed as a Lewis acid. I'll just provide a picture over here then of the, our product. So our NH ammonia has essentially accepted that H plus. We call this a coordination bond. And we have our Cl minus. 
I want to look at a few more of these examples with electron pairs, perhaps a little bit more complicated. Copper ions are capable of attracting pairs of electrons from substances we call ligands. Ligands are substances that can donate pairs of electrons. So a copper ion is capable of accepting six pairs of electrons from neighboring water molecules. And it, since the copper accepts, it's acting as an acid. The water, our ligand, is donating pairs of electrons. Here's another example, boron trichloride. Boron, you might recall, is a somewhat small atom and being, can be stable with only six pairs of electrons. So I provided its structural formula here. Ammonia, on the other hand, would have an unbonded pair of electrons. And ammonia is capable of donating those electrons by means of our coordination bond to that boron. And as a result, the boron accepts those pairs of electrons. So BCl3 is an acid. And our ammonia is a base. Here's a more complicated example from organic chemistry. Um, this is called a halogenoalkane. It's got a halogen, chlorine, attached to an alkane molecule. In the tug of war for electrons, chlorine wins the tug of war. It's more electronegative and begins to develop a slightly negative charge and the carbon slightly positive. Hydroxide with three unbonded pairs of electrons around it is attracted to that slightly positive charge. And as it makes its move towards that positive charge, these electrons essentially leave with the chlorine. So no longer is it a partial charge, but it becomes a fully negative charge. And also, the carbon now, instead of being slightly positive, becomes fully positive, called a carbocation. But now we have a positively charged carbon that needs a pair of electrons. So it now acts as an acid. It's looking to accept a pair of electrons from the hydroxide, which therefore acts as a base. In organic chemistry, you might learn these under different names. A substance which essentially seeks positive things is called a nucleophile. Hence, Lewis bases are nucleophiles. Similarly, the halogenoalkane with the chlorine attached to it, it acts as an electrophile. Let's take a look now at an example. Which of the following represents an acid-base reaction according to Lewis concepts, but not Bronsted-Lowry? Remember, Bronsted-Lowry are interested in the movement of protons. So that's how I'm going to start this question. Is there an example of a reaction down here that doesn't involve the movement of protons? And C fits the bill. There's no protons in this particular equation that are moving. But how does it fit the Lewis definition? Well, if I draw boron trifluoride, so boron again is a rule breaker capable of being stable with just six pairs of electrons. I bring along the fluoride ion now, so it would have an extra electron beyond its seven, so I'll draw its Lewis formula here, and it has a negative charge. It is capable of donating that pair of electrons to the boron, creating that species. 
So here I have an example of a substance donating, so that makes it a Lewis space, and the boron trifluoride accepting, making it a Lewis acid. So it fits the Lewis concepts, but not Bronsted-Lowry.